Um, we've been discussing passwords in quite some extent over the past couple of weeks and, and the, the past couple of episodes. And I thought, let's maybe dive a little deeper. Um, and obviously, in the previous episodes, we've discussed password managers and how to build strong, unique passwords. But I thought it would be fitting for us to maybe discuss how you should avoid uh, using compromised passwords and what to do when that happens. So I think first things first, Dan, let's maybe just discuss the hazards of having uh, your passwords exposed. What are some of the implications of having these exposed? Cool, Les. So we've spoken to death about passwords. Um, imagine your password as a key getting you into you know, all the different locks, all the accounts, all the vaults that, that you have. When a data breach occurs through no fault of yours, this is a data breach of an account somewhere that you've got. There's some website that you have got a password for. This could be a small, you know, nondescript shopping website. It could be a, you know, weather website. It could be just any simple crappy website out there. And you have created an account on that website. You have created a username, which is normally your email address and a password for you to get into that site. All sites and all site security are not created equally. So while we know that the security around your Google account or your Facebook account or you know many other major brands, they are spending tens of millions of dollars on protecting your account and looking after the safety of, of your account and their platform and their systems, your smaller websites may not have so much investment in security and therefore the chance of them getting breached or hacked is, is quite likely or could be likely. The problem we have with these smaller accounts as well is that how they actually store our passwords is not equal either with your big brands and your big companies, they are taking critical care about how they store your passwords on their systems and on their databases. It's heavily encrypted. So even if they do have a, an attack, even if they do have a breach, the attackers, the cyber criminals are not actually gonna be able to use the passwords in there because they'll be completely encrypted. They're not gonna be able to get access to it to see that even if they do steal data, your passwords are looked after, they're encrypted. Other websites, maybe not so much. So the problem that we have is if there is a data breach on one of these websites where you have stored a password and they haven't encrypted your password correctly, now there is a long list um, that cyber criminals will have access to of thousands of usernames and the corresponding passwords to those usernames. So the immediate hazard for that is for that website that has been breached, the hackers can turn around and immediately get into your account because they've now got the list of what the username is for the account and what the corresponding password is for that username. They can immediately get into the account of that breached um, breached website, breach, breach site. The knock-on effects and possible hazards is if you have reused your password on other accounts, now the cyber criminals have got a list of usernames and passwords, and they're gonna start taking those and putting them into all of the big known brands out there, all of the banks, all of the social media, um, all of the investment companies, all of the email companies. They're gonna start putting in these combinations of username and passwords into all of these accounts. And I bet you that they will come up with access to many of these accounts because users are reusing the password that they used in that crappy website for their Google access or their Microsoft account or their bank account. So this is where some of the major hazards come into when a password gets exposed because immediately that a hacker group hacks into a company, gets access to this list of passwords and usernames, what they will typically do is either try and then attack and get, gain access to these accounts using this information, but what they will more commonly do is immediately go to the dark web and they'll sell that data list. And they'll sell that list of username and passwords to thousands of hacker groups and scam groups and, and different cyber criminal entities out there on the dark web. And now you've got hundreds of different groups trying to use this data to hack into different accounts. So there's there's huge exposure there 
for if there is a breach on a on, on a website or on an account that you are possibly using. Yeah, it's super scary stuff, Dan. And is there any way for you to know if your passwords have been compromised and actually been sold on the dark web, like you mentioned? Yeah, so firstly, um, there's a great site called Have I Been Owned or Have I Been Pwned, um, however you pronounce that, who knows. Um, there was a misspelling some time ago um, and they kind of stuck with that. It's a meme. It's a, yeah, you've got to be in the right crowd to get that joke. But there's a site called Have I, Have I Been Pwned? We'll, we'll put the, the spelling for that and the, and the link to it here. Um, but it's an awesome site. It's an essential tool. What these guys do, all that they do is they will monitor um, site breaches and they will monitor um, these lists that are coming up on the dark web that are being sold. So anytime that a site is breached, anytime that passwords are breached and exposed, these guys are getting those lists and they're then putting them into their site. So what's really cool is you can then go onto their site and allow you to check whether your email address um, has been part of a data breach. So, you know, you can put in multiple email addresses. You can use your personal email address and see which of your personal accounts has maybe been involved in a breach. You can put in your work email address there and see which of your, your different accounts and different services or different apps has maybe been involved in a breach as well that you were using a work account for. Um, it's really, really useful. It lets you know which of those accounts have breached and then you're able to then go in and, and take action there. So Have I Been Pwned is, is a, an amazing site, um, a, amazing resource for that. Um, and then there are password managers that are starting to do this service and introduce this service as well, which is quite cool. Um, browser passwords, I know that Chrome does it, um, and a number of other password manager apps um, are integrating these, these databases as well. So they'll flag up if any of your accounts has been breached um, or, or a known breach of, of those accounts, and you can then go in and, and take action. So yeah, th those are pretty much where you want to be looking, where you want to be doing your checks. Cool, Dan. And in the unfortunate event, if, if you ever suspect you have been breached or your, your credentials have been breached, what are some immediate measures that you can take to, to contain this? Okay, so first things first is an immediate password change for that account. You know, as soon as you find out that an account has been breached, you need to go into that account and you need to change your password immediately. Hopefully you've got MFA set up on it. So there's no major risk. Um, but, you know, regardless, go in, change that password. Your username is going to be the same. It's, it's going to be one of your email addresses. So that doesn't need to change. Um, but change your password immediately. Double check that there's there's been no access, that nothing serious has, has changed um, and, and go in and change that password. Um, secondly, you know, unique passwords, we've spoken about it to death, they're non-negotiable. Every account should have a distinct unique password uh, for that account. But if you don't, and you're using the same password for all of your accounts, and you have a breach of one of your accounts, it's going to impact all of your accounts. So first things first, punch yourself in the face real hard for not having unique passwords. Secondly, go into all of the other accounts that you're using that same password and change them as soon as you can, okay? It's gonna be a ball ache and a ton of work for you, but that's your own fault because you didn't have unique passwords. And this is exactly why you need to have that, all right? Um, and then just finally, top tip, you know, when you are creating those new passwords, make sure that they are complex and they're long and you're saving them in a password manager so that you can, you know, remember them later and get back to them later. So, you know, the, the passwords we're creating, um, they need to be near impossible for attackers to guess. Having a really, really strong password is not going to stop these breaches it's not going to stop hackers breaching companies and getting into their unencrypted systems and getting there but what it is going to do is stop many other types of password attacks so when we are recreating and we're changing passwords make sure that they're really strong good quality and unique yeah 100 percent, dan i think before before you wrap up i'll just add to your list there i think yeah definitely understanding the gravity of, of password security is is the first step um 
I think is the next is probably to to arm yourself with the tools and practices that fortify your your digital life. Like you mentioned, password managers are vitally important. Um, MFA, like you mentioned, adds extra extra layer of security. And then I think staying informed is super critical as well. You know, regularly updating yourself on the latest cybersecurity uh, best practices and like they say, knowledge is power. So yeah, that's what I like to add. Um, but yeah, Dan, I think that's that's all we have time for today. Thank you for your time and insights, and I'll catch you in the next one. Awesome, Ace. See you in the next one, mate. Cheers.